Bette Midler in No Frills. Ms. Bette Midler. A Bette Midler show with no frills? Why, that's unthinkable. Unthinkable. Oh, you want frills? Sure. All right, let's go. Get the crew in here. Come on. Look, people, I want lights. I want backdrops, costumes, sets, the whole thing. Come on, let's move it, huh? Somebody get your musicians in here. Let's move it. Time is short. Let's go, let's go. Who's got the interview clips? Get me a joke. Somebody get it. Somebody make up a joke. Write it. Get me a joke in here. Can somebody get me the book, please? Come on, let's go. We need concert footage. We need recording studio footage. I don't care where you get it, people. I want it here now. Come on, Ben wants frills. Let's give her credit. Now that's more like it. Um, I had a very big success with a, a song called The Rose, and people come to my show and they, I think they identify very, very strong, strongly with that movie. I mean, much, much more so than I have been able to uh, 
conceive of. And um, that song is a real hard song to top because it uh, touched people in a, in a very, it varies very strongly. And that's really what I was looking for when I, when, I, when I was looking for a ballad. I wanted something that would, you know, that people could relate to across the board, old people, young people, women. And um, I think this song, I think it has it. I know, what's, I know what's going on. I listen to the greats, the near greats. I do. I know what synthesizers are. You know, I'm an up to the minute kind of gal. Um, I like that song, Is It Love? I couldn't resist it when I heard it. That, that actually was one of the 2000 tapes that I got that someone had sent me. It's a Nick Gilder song. Uh, and 
I did. I, I chose it out of that great big pile. I found some great songs. I found a, a little group that in, in from Wichita, Kansas. That the what was the name of that, that band? All girl. It was an all girl band, and they had the strangest songs. But I couldn't get a hold of them, so I could never. I couldn't cut the song. They didn't have a phone. I, they didn't have a manager. I had this tape in my in this pile of 2000. They had songs like Alien Love. I mean, these songs were really out to lunch, and they were like 14 years old, these little girls had written these songs. They were very young. I did flirt with the idea of, of, of you know, cranking out a teeny bopper album, but I really, I'm really not that. You do have to face up to that. You do have to face up to that. So is Sophie is kind of a, she's kind of another character. She it started out as Sophie Tucker, but the jokes got so vile that I mean, 
in order to save Sophie Tucker's memory, I stopped saying that they were Sophie Tucker jokes because really they weren't. And Sophie is kind of a, Soph is kind of a, you know, kind of a vulgar woman who, uh, who you know, doesn't see any harm in having a good laugh. And her boyfriend is Ernie, and uh, they carry on, and uh, let's see, I was in bed one night with my boyfriend, Ernie said to me, Soph, how come you never tell me when you're having an orgasm? I said to him, Ernie, you're never around. Oh, I'll never, never forget it, you know. I'll never forget the time I ran into my girlfriend, Clementine, on the street. Her left breast was hanging out of her dress. I said, Clementine, for God's sake, your left breast is hanging out of your dress. She said, oh my God, I must have left the baby on the bus. <laughs> oh, yes, you know, I've been wearing my bra for years and years. I did, I've been wearing my bra for just years. That is my field of expertise, you know, brassieres. I know all about them. Well, I've just been wearing mine for years and years, and I got my first one when I was 11 years old. I was a D cup. And I just had to beg my mother for that brassiere, because she thought I would stop growing, see? And I told her that that was the concept. One day I got so fed up, I rolled out of bed, you know, and I had to pull my tits out of my eyes, you know? <laughs> I said to myself, how much do these things weigh? <laughs> and I realized that I've been carrying them around all these years and I never really realized how much they added to my weight. So I weighed them. <laughs> I did. I got myself one of those little male scales, you know, the flimsy kind. You know, the kind they wear weigh postage on, you know? and I put it down on the table, you know, and I unhooked my bra and I flopped one of those suckers down there on that male scale. <laughs> Bing, bam, boom, went the male scale onto the floor. <laughs> I tried and tried till I finally got it right. I won't tell you how much they weigh, but it cost $87.50 to send them to Brazil. My favorite waste of time is a Marshall Crenshaw song. And uh, a good friend of mine brought that album to me, the, like the first day it came out. And it's a great album. It's full of, you know, it has a lot of punch and a lot of vibrancy. And um, I liked him right away. He, I mean, he's a pop craftsman in the best sense. And so I called him up, or called his manager, and somehow or another we managed to uh, connect. And I went to see him work. He was working with Joe Jackson at the Greek last year. And we, he came to see me work, and we kind of got, I think he's terrific. And I'm really, really glad that I got to do this song. It ha, it's a, a very, um, very, um, it sounds like a radio record. You know, I always wanted to make like a radio record, like a song that you have no question, oh, that song, that, that should go on the radio. And uh, this song, I, I think that song has it. You're my, baby, you're my favorite waste of time.
Well, I'll tell you, I was really sorry that the Rose died. I could have gone on forever. I loved her with all my heart. She was, she had everything, and people loved her too. And I, I, I could have done Rose too, and Rose goes to Vietnam, and <laughs> Rose shops at Dior, and not to make fun of it, but really, I, I mean, I loved her so much. Maybe she didn't really die, maybe she, but you know, you can't really do that. You have to be decent about it and say, you know, follow, you know, commit yourself to what you, you, you've done. Some say love, it is a river, and it drowns the tender reeds. Some say love, it is a razor, and it leaves your soul to bleed. Just an endless sentence. Well, this is from a book I wrote called The Saga of Baby Divine. Make sure that your life is a rare entertainment. It doesn't take anything drastic. You needn't be gorgeous or wealthy or smart, just very enthusiastic. And I am living proof. Thank you.
the spring. 